Now, the Democrat who wins the August primary will go up against the winner of the Republican race. The latest poll out last week has Ron DeSantis with a commanding lead, 41% to Agriculture Commissioner Adam Putnam's 29%. DeSantis' lead is most likely due to his endorsement from President Donald Trump, who rallied for him earlier this week in Tampa. I appreciate your support, Mr. President, but I appreciate more the leadership you're showing for our great country. We have the strongest economy we've had in years. We are standing four square behind our ally, the state of Israel. Now, the night before President Trump's rally in Tampa, DeSantis released a campaign ad in which he teaches his daughter to build the wall and reads his son the art of the deal. DeSantis' opponent says he won't let the president's endorsement derail his campaign. Florida Agriculture Commissioner Adam Putnam joined the Band of Brothers Veterans Group in the Villages for a campaign event this week. Look, I believe that my grassroots uh, activists, the relationships that I've built all over this state, including right here in the villages, is going to put us over the top. I support the president. I support the president's agenda. But this is about being Florida's governor. Putnam says he knows Florida better than any other candidate. He also promised to keep our state a, quote, conservative stronghold. Now we're going to bring back Todd McDermott and our exclusive political analyst to weigh in on the Republican candidates. All right, former Congressman Ron Klein, former House Majority Leader Adam Hastner. Ron, I'll ask you first, is there anything that came out of this debate tonight that the nominee who wins August 28th will need to be wary of in the general election? No, I think it's the usual story. The Republicans go after the quote-unquote tax and spend, although most of them said they weren't going to raise taxes. Uh, there'll be gun issues that they probably will run against. But I think, again, Democrats are going to be in the offense on reasonable gun laws. So I think overall, I think it was uh, uh, there's going to be a very big contrast between DeSantis if he wins and the, the Democrat who emerges from the primary. All right, Adam Hazard, did you see vulnerabilities in whoever wins this that will be exploited in the general election campaign? Ron's right, there's definitely gonna be a big contrast, but what you saw tonight, Gwen Graham is the front runner right now, and I think she stumbled on several occasions on explaining some of her votes and also on presenting a clear vision on, on some of the issues that she stands for. What that could do is depress primary voters. Yes, there might be excitement of anti-Trump, but if they're not excited that one of their own, again, somebody with less than 35% is going to win this primary, that means 65% of the Democrat primary voters won't have voted for the winner. They're gonna have a lot of work to do, and if she has some of those uh, blemishes on her record, it, it might be hard to rally the base. I should point out, Adam just uh, told us that the undecideds won't be voting in the primary, but we don't know that. There's 25 to 30% Democrats undecided right now. We'll see on August 28th, and we're gonna make these guys do a lot of work between now and November. Gianna and Felicia. All right, Todd, thank you. Well, the goal of any political debate, of course, is to win over voters, especially those who are undecided. Ron Burke watched the debate along with a group of undecided voters. And Ron, did what the candidates have to say sway any of their minds? Well, we had four undecided voters earlier, and they had not necessarily zeroed in on one candidate. They had a couple candidates in some cases. I have four more joining me right now. We, we had a watch party of undecided voters here in, in the hotel. We have Grace, we have Salusa, we have Stephanie, and we have Kathleen. And interestingly, I think it's a consensus here. They thought Gillum did a good job, they thought Levine did a good job, but they had questions really about how Gwen Graham came over. You said there were two people that bothered you, Grace, and Graham was one of them. What bothered you? Um, it was just the fact that she talked about issues, but there wasn't enough about what policies, what she wants to do to address those issues. It seems like they, they needed more substance. She was dealing more on the emotion. In particular, there were some, some groans in the room, I think I can say, when she talked about being a mom. It seemed like the group said, enough of that, let's get to some, some, some tactics here. There were too many times that she was, she was pushing towards, uh, towards the moms out there, trying to get the votes from the moms, when in fact it was, it was irritating. It got to a point where it was irritating. Uh, so in that point, she needs she needs to focus more on on her ex personal experience, and she also needs to to focus more on on her her lifespan, mm -hmm. the work that she has done, and also her her ability to go across the aisle if needs be. Has either of you zeroed in on one candidate? Um, not no? yet. 
Not no? yet. No. St so you're still uh, yeah, undecided. Still undecided. All right, let's come over to Stephanie. Uh, what about Gwen, Gwen Graham uh, impressed you tonight in terms of left an impression on you, not necessarily a positive impression? What would you take from her performance tonight? Well, I think she missed a lot of opportunity to actually expound on a lot of the policies that she would put in place, um, some of her previous history as a congressman. I just think she missed a lot of opportunity to for the, the voters such as myself who's still undecided you know, how, why, why I should even kind of give my vote to you. Mm -hmm. How'd you feel about it, Kathleen? I also wanted to hear more policy from her, <clears throat> and, uh, and I felt that was lacking in her answers. We got more policy from the other candidates than we did from her. Where were you leaning, if at any direction, coming into tonight? When I came in tonight, I was leaning towards Andrew Gillum. I'm still leaning towards Andrew Gillum. However, Levine surprised me. He was, uh, he was a stronger candidate than, than I expected to uh, to see. Where were you leaning, Stephanie? Um, I wasn't leaning with anyone in particular. I wanted to have more information. Um, but now, I too am leaning more towards Andrew Gilliam and, uh, Gilliam and um, Philip Levine. The consensus also seems to be that Gilliam is somebody they had not seen much of. Um, and they got an opportunity tonight to see him more. Mm -hmm. and, and he impressed you guys. You thought that he was somebody that really came to the forefront in Gillum this, in this was, forum. Gillum was extremely impressive in that, uh, in my rubric, Gillum came out with, with uh, 39 points because he was specifics. He was not attacking anyone. He was attacking the issues as the issues came in. Levine came, came, came in in second place on, in my rubrics. Uh, in that I didn't know who Levine was. This is the first time you know I'm, I'm getting to, to hear anything from him. Mm -hmm. But I was I was expecting more from from Green and Graham, and unfortunately I didn't get it. King on the on the other hand has has a lot to offer, but he focused too much on on uh, on attacking other individuals. I would say King take the time and, and go straight to the, to the issues, and he he so that people will, will know who he is. So that's that's one of the reasons why I'm still I'm still you know. Still Not on the fence. Still, still on the fence. And, still and undecided. Haven't decided yet. So nobody's locked in, which I think is probably uh, probably the norm coming into one debate opportunity, even though it is the last debate. So you guys will pay attention and and and, and cultivate your thoughts going into these last few weeks. And at some point, you'll have to come up with uh, the one, whoever that might be. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. We appreciate it. Uh, it was a great time with uh, with these undecided voters. We thank the Palm Beach County Democratic Party for helping us get this together. Thanks so much, guys. You were great to, to spend the time with and and learn a little bit of something from your perspective. Thanks so much. Let's go back inside to the studio. All right, Ron, thank you. Well, we hope tonight's debate and post-debate special helped you make an informed decision on who you want to cast your ballot for later this month. And now the most important thing you can do is vote, of course. The primary is Tuesday, August 28th. Early voting begins August 13th in Palm Beach and Okeechobee counties, August 18th in Martin, St. Lucie, and Indian River counties. And I think in the end here, I think what we're all trying to achieve is to get people interested in these issues. The issues are very well defined mm -hmm. for this race now. Uh, I believe that these candidates have all defined themselves perhaps more tonight than any other appearance they've mm -hmm. made so far, any joint appearance. And now it's time for people to actually make their own decision to come August 28th. And at the same time, I think that, Mark, you would say that you saw people who have some well-defined messages by now. W whether it's the, what you're testing them on as far as truth, truth tests go, they've said it before. We're seeing some right. of these same statements over and over and again. We had one false tonight. We had a couple of middle-of-the-road half-truths in there as well. So, of course, do your homework, do your own fact-checking, and you stay up with the candidates, see what they have to say. We'll have much more in the morning news tomorrow. So All right. Morning. We want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule and inviting us into your home. See you Good night. Morning.